So I'm teaching these 13-year-old kids. That's what we call sixth and seventh grade in America. And uh, 13, who here was ever 13 once? <laughs> what a horrible, horrible age to be. And uh, everything in the world is new and exciting and attracts your attention. The girl who sits right next to you steals your attention away. The guy sitting behind you, kicking your chair the entire time, steals your attention. Your attention can even be stolen by a piano being pushed out a window across the street. <laughs> True story. A grand piano wrapped in quilted pads by the movers, wrapped up in canvas straps like classical music's birthday gift to the insane, is gently nudged without its legs. A grand piano without its legs is nudged out an eighth floor window on 62nd Street and it dangles from the neck of the mover's crane. Spinning slowly in April air, Chopin shiny black lacquer squares and dirty white crisscross patterns played like the second to last note of a concerto played on the edge of the seat, the edge of tears, the edge of eight stories up. It's a fucking piano about to fall and I'm trying to teach math in a building across the street. <laughs> Who can teach when there are such lessons to be learned? <laughs> All the greatest common factors are delivered by flatbed trucks, lowered by long-necked cranes, or come through everything, even air, like snow. See, snow falls for the first time every year, and every year my students rush to the window as if snow were more interesting than math, which, of course, it is. <laughs> So please, let me teach like a Steinway. Let me teach like I am teetering on the edge of losing everything. So hinderingly beautiful, so dangling from the neck of the mover's crane, let me teach like the new snow falling. America's attitude towards its teachers, and I don't know if the same is true in Denmark, but America's attitude is contemptuous at its worst and patronizing at its best. <laughs> and the worst thing is that these attitudes are manifested in the very students that I teach. I once had a kid say to me, Mr. Molly, why do you always wear a suit? I mean, come on, you're just a teacher. <laughs> I have been rendered speechless by the unwitting insults of my students. And people my own age, it's even worse. I was once at a party that had more lawyers at it than you could possibly kill with a handgun. <laughs> and this one guy tried to use me <laughs> as the example of the mental deficiency, the utter stupidity that one would have to have in order to willingly choose to become a teacher. He says, the problem with teachers is what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided that his best option in life was to become a teacher? <laughs> He reminds the other dinner guests that, you know, it's true what they say about teachers. Those who can, do. And those who can't, teach. <laughs> I decide to bite my tongue instead of his. And I resist the urge to remind the other dinner guests that it's also true what they say about lawyers, because we're eating, after all. And this is supposed to be polite conversation. I mean, you're a teacher, Taylor. Come on, be honest. What do you make? And I wish he hadn't done that. Asked me to be honest, because you see, I have this little policy in my classroom about honesty and ass-kicking, which is, if you ask for it, then I have to let you have it. <laughs> you want to know what I make? 
I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a C plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor, and I can make an A minus feel like a slap in the face. How dare you waste my time with anything less than your very best. You want to know what I make? I make kids sit through 40 minutes of study hall in absolute silence. No, you may not work in groups. No, you can't ask me a question, so put your hand down. Why won't I let you go to the bathroom? Because you're bored, and you don't really have to go, do you? I make parents tremble in fear when I call home at around dinner time. <laughs> ah, this is Mr. Molly. I hope I haven't called at a bad time. <laughs> I just wanted to talk to you about something that your son said today. He said, leave the kid alone. I still cry sometimes, don't you? And it was the noblest act of courage that I have ever seen. I make parents see their children for who they are and who they can be. You want to know what I make? I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write, 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 and then I make them read. I make them spell definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful, definitely beautiful over and over and over again until they will never misspell either one of those words again. I make them show all their work when I'm teaching math and then hide it on their final drafts in English. I make them realize that if you've got this, then you follow this. And if somebody ever tries to judge you based on what you make, you give them this. Here, let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. I make a goddamn difference. Now what about you? Yeah!